Hello and welcome to Panting of the Geeks. Enjoy us again for another unboxing video. And this time it's the uh, Stonecast Eternals Celestin Prime. Ooh. Hammer of Sigmar. There he is. Or the male version of Saint Celestine. Yeah. Or the offspring of Saint Celestine and the gash. <laughs> Looking at this bit. That bit, very yeah. Very gashy. Yeah, very much so. Yeah. How was that on then? I don't, I don't, I'm not sure I want to think about that. Okay. Yeah. Um, so there's the back. Uh, a bit of a close up of the, was it, the staff of bringing comets down on your enemies and Galmaraz itself. There we go. So let's get it open. It's a very thin box, this, mm. surprisingly. Let's see the picture. It's meant to be about the same height as Nagash or something. I don't think it's the same bulk. No, we'll find out. We'll compare it after we've, uh, after we've actually got it together. Oh, there we go. Oh. Uh, so I had a bet with Claire said it was on one sprue. It's not. It's one and a half. Technically, it's three sprues because well, maybe it isn't. I don't know. Yeah, it must be. Yeah, it, it must is. be classed as yeah, three sprues. Yeah. Wow. There we that's, go. That's surprising that actually. I yeah. thought they would have put it on one spoon, but those those wings though, they are quite big. Yeah they are. Cool. Awesome sauce. It's got more of the squirrely stuff on that one. A wing. A bit of cloak. Got a large round base. Mm. Same size as the Onega. And we have the constructions. Build the base. Fair enough. <laughs> More building of the base. Oh boy. <laughs> That's going to be fun. And then we've got the body. And then we've got the wings. And then we've got the final connectors, which are the. Mm. So. Um, for painting reasons, I'm considering building this in three separate parts. Mm -hmm. It's almost in three separate parts. It's got it here. So we've got the wings separate, the body separate, and the spirally, spirally, thing. spirally bit separate. But then this bit's like a bit blocked out then. Because that's the bit that covers the, the gap there. So I'm going to have to paint it in four separate bits, that being one of them. Unless, unless that'll stick on more. We'll have a look as we go along, we'll see mm. how it ends up. So, as usual, we're going to stick this together, or mostly together. So, let us uh, begin. Okay, so first we need the base, surprisingly, and uh, we also need part 20, which appears to be the ground part. So we bit started at the bottom and building our way up, which seems a bit logical. <laughs> a bit too logical, maybe. And then we need um, part 21, which is this swirly bit. I think all the swirly bits are going to look the same. So we need swirly bit 21, and then we need um, part 34, which is basically some sort of MacGuffin that's been is flying around in the swirly bit, some sort of celestial... Um, gizmo, and then we end up with this first sort of wave of this. So, let's have a look. So this is the first part, which is just like the scenic base, if it is such a thing. And it just shows it going onto the base. It doesn't really specify if there's a particular place. With it being circular, I don't think it'll matter. It's much the I jump and give it about that much of a gap. Okay, so we're going to stick those three bits together. There's the uh, part 21, which has this weird sort of shape there. We have a flat piece there. Is that a bit? Where does that go? So that seems to attach to that to 
make this circular thing. So if you get both of them lined up to start with, you'll be able to sort of like figure out where about the centre of the base is from the model. So I'm going to do that. Stick these two bits together, and then I'll be back with you. Okay, so there's the first two pieces together. I had to hold that down for a little while to make sure it stayed down. This bit's the first piece of the uh, whatever it's meant to be. <laughs> Some celestial stuff. That goes here on this corner. There's a little corner bit there. And then there's a little bit underneath where that'll just fit on just there. So once I've put that bit out, we've been moving on to the next stage of the spiral that's going up, which is part 24. And uh, I'll be back with you when we get up to that bit. Okay, so there's that piece on. The next piece, part 24. It's also got a flat side underneath because it starts at the other side here and goes on there, crossing all underneath this bit and then around the outside. So it's going to come forward a bit. I'm not sure whether that means I should have put it a bit further back or the weather it's going to look cool when it's sort of overlapping the base a bit. But I'll find out when it's all together in the end. So <laughs> I'll have to wait till the end to see that. So I'm going to glue this bit on and then after this comes part 25 and 27. Part 25 is another piece of the spiral. This time I think it's continuing going up from this bit. And we have part 27 which is another bit of gmuggofin. So we're back when I've stuck this bit on. Okay so we've got this part here which has got a groove in it and appears to fit onto this flat piece just as this second spiral starts and that sort of seems to fit on there like that so that appears to be where it goes so I'm going to glue it on there and then we have the next part up which is this bit which is part 25 this appears to fit into that bit the and that other bit's just fallen off so I'm going to glue that bit back on so that goes on there like that seems to fit very well but we'll find out and I'll be back with you once they're all glued back together okay so we're on to the next pages so let's look at that so this is what it looks like so far so the next up is part 28 which covers find it again there's this little piece of like tail to nothing because it's connected to this bit and it's just where the join is between these two parts so it strengthens the join so that's quite clever so uh you just go whoosh on here i wonder if that's what we're going to do all the way around to strengthen the joins it would make sense and cover them as well and cover them although to be fair they're fairly well covered because of the way it is mm. so i presume these are like little Things Oops. orbiting him, yeah. like making a vortex. That's what it looks like, anyway. Mm. Like these are like spiral. These are like the spiraling around, creating all this stuff. So this next part, which is part twenty-two, and then Claire can be cutting off part twenty-nine. Okay. Part twenty-two goes on the opposite side, the first side we started on, and then you got this little indentation there, which this should fit into. So that will go like that, which matches up to that, and just there. So let's glue that into place. Hopefully that just slips in. And that's the case of keeping it in place. So I'm going to hold this for a while while Claire turns the camera off and I'll be back with you in a sec. There's parts 22 attached now. So next up is part 29 which is this small little comedy type thing. It actually goes back around this side because there's two little prongs just there and inside we have two little holes for them to go in. So that attaches to this bit just there. And the next pieces we're going to need are parts 35 and parts 36, which are two more little MacGuffin comedy type things. So we'll get them out and I'll get this on and I'll be back with you. So here we are so far. 
So next up is part 35, which is this one here. It's got this indentation underneath. And that fits onto this bit here where there's a join between these two parts. Because these are two separate bits of the model. So again this covers a join. And hopefully strengthens it a bit. So that goes on there. Some glue. And this bit fits in quite snugly. We did when I dry fitted it into that bit there. Okay. And next up we have part 36. It goes a bit further up. And there's this sort of incomplete tail of something there. That's where this goes on. Here it is. So you can see it there. And this will just fit on to that like I did it a minute ago. <laughs> Hang on. Yeah. So this bit, there's a little gap underneath, which slides onto that bit there. That's where it goes. So we go all around that. Now it just goes onto the drink. There we go. So next we have another bit of spiral. Which isn't well, numbered. Like it, which isn't numbered, which is really, really handy. But if you use uh, deduction, mm -hmm. <coughs> that number there, I don't know if it's on camera, it's number 23. Yeah. So that must be 26 because there's only two left on this screw. So you've got 26 and 23. I'm looking at that. It, Fit that bit there. So that's what number 20? 20, 26. 26. Yeah. So it's not very good. Especially oh, when you've got a spiral like this. I was actually going to say so. before, I hope they haven't cocked up on any of the numbering on this, yeah. otherwise you. At least it's only one missing. It's, it's only one number missing. Transpose. And anything. it is easy to understand. Yeah, you know what 23 is. From that. Yeah. So it's part 26. 26. And then we have this other bit here of MacGuffin. Which makes up part 32 and 31. That's my favourite word of the day. Sorry, I keep saying that. McGuffin. Yeah, I don't know why. It's got in my head. So, um, this bit looks like it attaches onto this part here, in this little gap, if it's correct. And this looks like it's like the top part of the spiral now. Give it that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that, in theory, this end, this is the first time I've done it, it should go into the dulls, kind of. I'll need to sort of push that bit into position now. So that bit glues onto there, so I'm going to do that, and then we're going to attach 32 and 31 together, and we'll be back with you for putting that on. Um, okay, so I've just given you parts 32 and 31. Yeah. I've just noticed on the sprue, those parts are actually reversed. So that's part 31, this one here. Yeah. And that little bit there is actually part 32 on right, the sprue. So, so they've just right. transposed the figures wrong. Okay. <laughs> okay, well, not too bad. We've still got it together. That's all right. There it is, together, those two bits. There's a little slidey sort of tab on there. Which fits onto this bit we've just put on, which is there. So you can see that on the camera. It's like a little, there it is, just picking up on the light. That's where that's going to go. And hopefully that should go on pretty easy, he says. <laughs> Whenever I say that, that's when it goes wrong. Yay. said it ironically though, so I should be alright. There we go. <laughs> so that's gone on there. That's pretty easy. So next up, we have part 30, which is another flying medoodle. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to think of other things to say. Um, 30, yeah. Okay, which appears to attach to two parts. If the drawing's correct. But I'll have a look at that. I'll be back with you. Okay, so part 30, have a good look at it. It's got three little indentations there. 
but it goes over the join here. We've got three little indentations there. But then this part on there seems to go on the underside of this. So that's going to go on there, something like that, and connect up like that. Quite fiddly this bit. So I'm going to do it and let you know if there's any problems. We'll be back with you in a sec. Now we're back. Okay, that was pretty faffy. So that bit's got to go onto there. So those three little prongs go down and it goes flush against the edge of that. So make sure when you're putting that bit on that you make sure you scrape that bit so there's no bits of flash off the um, sprue or anything because there's a little bit there which is knocking the whole thing out. It didn't take much uh, to do that unfortunately. Um, so I took that bit off, I didn't even see it. And then um, glued that bit on there and then there's a little notch which goes under there. You can just see that, that it rests on just just there. So that sticks those two pieces together and stops from wobbling quite as much as it was. But I also cheat on that. I used a bit of super glue. I used a bit of this magic stuff, which is the Army Painter Magic. As you've not seen it, it's just a second part stage to the glue, which dries it instantly. So you can use any kind of super glue you want, I just use some Citadel glue, put it on over the top of that while I was holding it and then got Claire to spray this stuff on, it automatically sets in like a second. Yeah. So it's very good for holding things in places. The majority of that strength will come when the plastic glue dries, it was just simply to put it over the top while it, uh, keep it in place while it sets. So a bit of a, bit of a tip there, I do use that stuff a lot. Not as much as, no, I'm not using as many metal models, mm. but it's still useful for keeping things in place. Magic action. Just don't use a lot of glue, just use enough just to keep it in place while another glue or whatever else sets. So there we go, a little bit of a tip there. So, moving on, we've got uh, part 23, which is the last, is it, of the Yeah, it's the last swirly of the swirly bits. things. And we've got part 39, which is another bit of uh, flying celestial guff. Uh, <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm running out of names though. So that appears to go onto this prominent part there. Okay, it's so part 23 is there. Part 39 is just a little bit there. And this does actually attach onto this. There's two little sort of guide holes there where this goes onto, like that. So I'm going to glue that on first, wait for that to set, and then I'll be back with you. Okay, so there we go. Nice bit on, just fits on the same way. So we're spiralling around again. So next up we have parts 38 and 37, which are two parts of one of these thingamajigs. And there's, there's little guide holes on there to tell you where they go. This next bit goes on, just here there are two little indentations on this part here, which just fit onto there. So that bit just goes over like that. So I'm going to glue that bit on. Okay, so that's that bit done. So next up. We have the body. So that's part 8 and 10. So 8 is this long tabardy bit that goes all the way down to the ground. So it's got a shopping list on. Only quite literally. And then we have 10, which is a leg, by the looks of it. So that will go on to there. And then we've got part 9, which is the other leg, which will go on to there. So I'll get to that stage and I'll be back with you. So there is the body and the legs bit. Next up is part 7, which is this. And part 33, which is this. And that just goes on there. Somewhere, there we go. <laughs> Feel it out before. <laughs> there we go. So it just goes on like that. There's a little nodule. There. 
little bit. The Then that goes on to the back of the and there's two little prongs and two little holes. There's also a little bit there on for that glue. And that bit there goes into the back of the leg. A little square receptacle. And that needs to dry. So next up is part 88, which is the back cloak bit, which will go over the top of this. And then we have part four, which looks the same as part 88. <laughs> uh, That's confused me. <clears throat> <laughs> what does that mean? I'm not sure, because we've got the same bit there and there. There, yeah, that's what I was pointing out to you. Alright, so you do this bit first. So you get part four, five and six. And that creates part eight. Apparently it creates part 88, even though... <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. No, yeah. no, part four, five and six. Right. Together. Make the back part of the cloak. Okay. Which then goes somehow into part 88. Don't know how they got to that. And then goes, that goes on the back to create this bit. Right. Sorted. Okay. Right, so I'll stick these three parts together and I'll stick it to the back. It'll be going just above this bit. And once that's dry, I'll be back. Okay, so here it is so far. All the bits together. So next we have a choice of arms. We have two versions of Gar Mirage and we've got two versions of the uh, Comet Strike Scepter. So you can either have them holding up to make this, or holding down to make that. It's a difficult choice actually because they're both look pretty good. Just change kind of the mood of the model. That's kind of like sort of all powerful. Nonchalant. Nonchalantly. Kind of thing. No, that's come at me. Yeah. <laughs> I do quite like that one though. From this picture here, I like that one. Yeah, have a go if They're you both think you're hard enough. Yeah. And the other one's like, yeah, if you want to have a go, have a go, I'm not bothered. Just come at me, bro. Yeah. That's so it is. <laughs> right, we're going with that one. So come that at me, bro. is part 15 and part 17. If you want the other ones, it's actually part 16 and part 18 and 19, which make up this bit. I've made the right choice though. So. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you're not going to be looking at it going, oh, I should have chosen the other one. It's me too. Okay, so there's part 17. Which means it's going to be a bit like that, is it? Be down actually, shouldn't it? So it should be like that. And then there's the hammer, about 15. Do I just cut the other two off? I'll look at them as yeah, well. Yeah, sure. I suppose you could do it. You could anyway. do one up and one down. Yeah. I don't see any reason why you wouldn't be able to. You could have him so he's pointing his scepter down at something and holding the hammer back a bit. Mm -hmm. If you could position his head to look sort of down the length of the scepter anyway. Do you want the arm for that as well? Yeah, so a look. So the box art. The front box art shows him with it down. The back box art there shows it with him up. Oh, excuse me, sorry. Yeah. There we go. That's right, so I'm going to stick them so they're like that. I quite like that. Still got a regalness to it. Oh, it's got kind of a divine sense of yeah. to it. Yeah. 
the hard this one. Right, I shall stick those arms on and I shall be back with you hoping I made the right choice. Okay, so those are the the arms in the more upward position. Just go look at that. I don't think there's any wrong arms in the look. They both look pretty cool actually. <laughs> it was a difficult choice. I just need to take that little bit of uh, thing off the hammer once it's set. I should have done it before but I missed it. Right, so what's next? The shoulder pads are next. 13, 14 and the head's 12. Yep. Then we've got some Comet bit that goes on the front of the belt, right, which is it. number 11. So we'll stick all these bits on and then we'll be back with you. Okay, there we go. So that's the full body part. The head isn't, you could, you could make it movable, but it's a square peg on the bottom. So it's sort of stuck in the forward position. You could take that off and just move it around any way you wanted. So you could have it staring down one of the weapons if you wanted to. And the other one up. That would be quite imposing. So sort of like staring down a hammer at somebody or staring down the staff at somebody with the other one raised up. So there is a bit of option and a bit of movement. That's more than I would expect. I thought it was just going to be a static, no choice model. So we shall now move on to the next bit, which is the wing. Now it says here to stick the this bit to that bit. I am not going to do that. I am going to paint this separate because there's a lot going on on there. But just so you know, there's three little gaps. You can see two of them there. What's like a skull maybe. Two there and then one there. And at the bottom we have three bits. Those two back bits go into those gaps and then that one goes at the front into that cradle there. And then the two parts of the cloak, here and here, fit onto here and here. So, unfortunately I won't be able to show you that, because even blue tack won't keep that on. So, um, it will go in there a bit like that. But I won't be able to show you it glued together fully. It sits in there pretty easily actually. That went in. So that matches up very easily, and that just needs to be put into position. But yeah, that's, that's gone in a bit easier than I thought it would. I'm surprised at that. That's going to be pretty easy to glue together. So I'm quite happy to paint that separate now. So the final bit, because I'm always worried if you paint it first, when you're gluing it afterwards, you get glue on the paint or something, pull the paint off. Mm. It always uh, concerns me. So the wings, one, two, and three. So there is one of the wings, they are huge. I think that's like the size of both the other guys' wings together. I was going to say these are massive, these wings. It's very radiant. That's one, I take it. That's one, yeah. That's one. Putting the other one out. So we'll cut the other bit out and then go on to part three. So we'll do that and then we'll be back. So those are the wings together though. And then we have part 40, which covers this bit here. So that'll have to be done at the end. There we go. So those will go on the back. And that will be the model complete. But I'm not going to stick them on. I'm going to paint these separate. I would advise people to do that in this case. It looks like it should be pretty easy to put together afterwards. So I'm not too concerned about that. So, that just leads us to, uh, do as I said at the beginning, compare the size to Nagash, and it's pretty obvious now Nagash is a bit bigger, <laughs> just a bit. Um, so let's just uh, move these off here. And then I'm just going to adjust the camera. So there we go, there is the Prime, and that's him with wings on, comes to about that big. Here is Nagash. Oh my gosh. You can see Nagash's knee there in the shot. <laughs> so he's still I'm bigger than you. Even with the wings on. He's just over half the height of Nagash. Still on Nagash. Hello. There we go. So he's massive compared to Nagash. See people comparing him to the same size he isn't. No way. Um the, the only similarity is obviously the, the wispy. This bit. And the bottom part and the top part's Saint Celestine. 
it's like we said at the end, it's, it's kind of like Nagash's sort of like um, Sprog. Sprog. Love child. Love both child. Of yeah. Nagash and Saint Celestine. So cool. <laughs> So that brings us to the end of this video. Um, next time you'll see this will be in a showcase. I'll do another showcase once I've painted this and probably next week's models as well because we're getting some more um, Sigma rights next week. Mm -hmm. Some more flying Sigma rights. <laughs> and um, I'll do a showcase of the models for the Stormcast Eternals that I haven't shown you so far on the showcase but I have painted. So I've painted everything I've got now up to this guy So and whatever we get next week. Mm -hmm. So hopefully we'll see you then next week. So tune in for that. Other than that, we've got Malifaux Mondays coming up. We have. And we don't have a lot of time to do a lot much else at the moment, but we will be doing some other stuff soon. We're currently making some other um, movies for Halloween and stuff like that. We are, yeah. So um, stay so tuned for that. <laughs> yeah. And uh, hopefully we'll see you again soon. So uh, please like and subscribe if you haven't already. And Thanks take care, watching. guys. Bye. Bye for now.